The Mandalorian in many ways was a shot in the arm of not just the Star Wars universe, but the television industry. Yes, we know it's on Disney+, Plus, but it counts. Think about it, before this, the true Star Wars saga was confined to big budget movies and animated series, and one very terrible Christmas special. But through The Mandalorian, things changed, and many wondered, how big can this get? New TV style shows have been announced for Disney+, Plus in the Star Wars universe, and there is hope. And there's even hope that The Mandalorian Season 2 will be even bigger and better than the first one, which might be a bit of a stretch. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. Number six, lightning in a bottle. To be clear, we're not bashing the Mandalorian at all. It was a great new idea that touched on things only lightly touched upon in the canon stories and the video games. But what really made the Mandalorian feel special was that it was fresh, it was new, and it had nothing to do with the Skywalkers or people associated with them. This was focused on the lawless side of the galaxy far, far away with people whom we've only seen a few times and it was shot and done in a way that wasn't done in live action before for Star Wars. As they teased before the show was released, this was their Star Wars Western and it worked for the most part or not later. But the other thing that really worked in The Mandalorian's favor was that people needed something new and fresh in the new Star Wars world. The Last Jedi and the Rise of the Skywalkers are still very divisive amongst fans. Solo was a failure and Rogue One felt like a lifetime ago. So when you put in all these elements and a certain other one we're about to discuss, you get a perfect storm of great content, a needing fan base, and boom, you get a popular show. However, as many including Star Wars have proven over the years trying to capture lightning in a bottle twice doesn't always work. A great example of this is with Marvel and the Guardians of the Galaxy. The first movie was a shocking hit because of the great characters, perfect story, and direction by James Gunn, and so on. The sequel was good and did better in box office, but you could tell they were stretching things to try and recapture the magic of the first one. Or how about Rogue One and Solo? The first proved that anthology films can work and that people wanted to see them, and Solo proved that sometimes doing an origin story isn't enough, especially when it's badly written and acted. Now sure, by that time, token and other examples, The Mandalorian Season 2 could be truly magnificent in the vein of The Empire Strikes Back, but will it? It's hard to say. Number 5. We know about Baby Yoda now. Here's a key one that we bet a lot of you didn't think about. You see, when The Mandalorian was being advertised, there was an air of mystery as to what was going on, how it was all going to happen, and who was this Mandalorian that we were meeting. The mystery helped lure people in, and sure enough, it was a very different kind of Star Wars show. But the thing that shocked everyone by the end of the pilot was that the real star of the show was Baby Yoda. How they were able to keep that under wraps is a mystery none of us will ever be able to solve, but they did it, and when Baby Yoda came to be, the show instantly got taken to a new level, because suddenly everyone from all over the world loved Baby Yoda. He was the focal point for art. <laughs> memes, fan-made plushies until Disney shut them down, and so on. Because of the love of Baby Yoda, the fan base for the show grew. And that makes sense when you think about it, because The Mandalorian was built very much as a darker, grittier Star Wars story. And that was fine, but with Baby Yoda coming in and the various cute things he did, everyone wanted to watch in order to see what would happen next, which is fine for the first season. But now everyone knows that Baby Yoda is going to be there. There's very little mystery in that, and now it'll be up to the people behind the scenes to go and try and make things work to where Baby Yoda doesn't lose his shine. And before you go and type in the comments, yes, we know Baby Yoda doesn't have a gender and that's not its real name. We're just saying it like this to keep things simple, okay? Anyway, there is a cuteness limit with the child, see? Told you. And it could be pushed to its limit in Season 2 if the team is not careful, because part of what made Season 1 fun was learning about everything Baby Yoda could and couldn't do. Now we have a better understanding of the child and his Force abilities, and while they could grow, it's doubtful given the purpose of the show, which brings us to number 4, the Jedi Connection. Here's one of the big ones. As noted earlier, one of the biggest reasons why The Mandalorian was so special was that it didn't have any big connections to the Skywalker saga at all. Granted, Baby Yoda did change that a little, but the character was never in those movies or even the TV show. In fact, the only two canon creatures from that species are Yoda and Yaddle, so having Baby Yoda was honestly something unique. Plus, as Mando noted, he didn't know of the Jedi and that this was what the child was. But now the Jedi have been named, and according to many reports, we're going to see Mando meet one in person via fan favorite Jedi, Ashoka Tano. Ashoka was brought in via the Clone Wars cartoon and went from reject to fan favorite over the course of seven seasons, and the Star Wars Rebels cartoon cartoon. So, seeing her in live action would be a treat if true for some people, but by bringing her in, you're honestly kind of ruining the intent of the show. Granted, we don't know how many episodes of the season she'll be in, and her role in regards to Baby Yoda and Mando is very much up in the air, which is good. There's hope in that. But she's not the only Skywalker connection we have here, as apparently Boba Fett might be showing up, and we all know he doesn't have a good connection with Jedi due to Mace Windu killing his father. A Mando slash Boba fight to the death? Cool. But then you're again throwing in your lot with the main saga, which the Mandalorian is supposed to be avoiding like the plague. And of course, if these are the characters that we see in season two, who knows what we'll see in season
season three, which has already been confirmed. Number three, season one's quality. Look, overall, The Mandalorian season one was a good show. It helped bring the franchise back from the brink in many regards, and that's a good thing. But if you really looked at the season, you'll notice that it honestly had a few problems that can't be ignored, though most fans will happily just do that. Mainly, there were many filler episodes, which is an odd thing to have in a season that was just eight episodes long. Granted, when the episodes were good, they were good, but then there was episodes like The Gunslinger that was a rather low quality and wasted a good actress in Ming-Na Wen, despite it being directed by Dave Filoni of Clone Wars and Rebels fame. Furthermore, some of the episodes just seemed to be there to try and flesh out Mando, and yet it really didn't flesh him out at all. The season finale and pilot did more for Mando's character development than the rest of the episodes combined. Thankfully, some people did notice that, and the team behind The Mandalorian Season 2 have noted that there will be more closed-in storytelling and less filler, which we appreciate. Of course, we've heard teams say that they're doing one thing, and then they turn it around and don't, so we'll see how it goes. Number 2. Creating New Lore Despite what Disney wants you to believe, the history of the Mandalorian people is one that is honestly rather rich in content. There were expanded universe stories and video games that delved into them rather well, including freeing Boba Fett and making him the epic warrior we all know he was. Before, the Clone Wars cartoon helped with that, of course. But when Disney retconned the expanded universe and rendered many things non-canon, that left the Mandalorian with the ability to grow the culture in their own style. Which is why the Mandalorian people are underground fighting for survival and their now popular catchphrase, this is the why. We're excited to learn more about what happens with them, but with regards to baby Yoda, that's a bit murkier territory, because one of the reasons that George Lucas made Yoda like he did was because he wanted the species as mysterious. There is literally no information about them, their race, their home planet, or anything else. All we know is Yoda and Yaddle, and that they were both extremely Force-sensitive. But outside of that, nothing. Which means that the team behind the Mandalorian have to go and create the rest of that lore, and that can be dangerous if not handled properly. Plus, judging by teases from cast members, we may not even get answers in this season. We might have to wait until season 3 and 4 in order to truly go and find out anything meaningful about Baby Yoda. And don't forget about our new villain and the fact that he has the infamous Darksaber. How did he procure that? Why does he want the child so badly? These questions and the lore they'll create is potentially going to be very good, or potentially very bad. Number 1. What will happen with The Mandalorian Season 2? Given all that we've said, we want to reiterate that we don't hate The Mandalorian, but we are right to be cautious about what Season 2 will bring, and for a variety of reasons as we've noted. This is a bit of uncharted territory for the Star Wars universe. When they did their animated shows, they did take things in certain directions with new characters, but it was almost always tied to the Skywalker saga with the Mandalorian, it's not, or at least it's not yet. We want this show to not just do well, but to go and keep its own place in the Star Wars universe because it's a big universe and there are many new and fresh stories to tell. Yet certain reports and statements make me wonder just how long it'll be able to stay fresh with the new additions and tie-ins that are coming. We'll find out as soon as The Mandalorian Season 2 arrives at the end of this month. And there you have it everyone, a look at The Mandalorian Season 2 and the various pitfalls that it's likely to face in regards to having an equally good first season. What do you think will honestly happen with The Mandalorian Season 2? Will it be able to live up to the legacy that it has set? Do you think that they'll be able to recapture the magic and make Mando and Baby Yoda even cooler? Or will they try and outdo themselves and fall flat on their faces? Go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.